And they're off. Seven furlongs the trip they have here as they get away from the stalls. Mamselle Chanel, the white and green, has to be chased along a little bit. She's in mid division. Ipanema Princess, green jacket, blue cap, goes through to lead on the extreme riders. Pure gold, white sleeves on a blue jacket. Between those, all blue is Fairy Cross. And then the orange of Ibiza Love, followed by Mamselle Chanel. Tagline, black jacket, widest of all. Bet me is behind her. In Nana, the black and yellow colours comes next as they leave the back straight in company with Dance in the Grass and Lady Alara, two lengths behind those, the back marker. They're heading already onto the halfway stage and it is Ipanema Princess, a length and a half ahead. Pure Gold running in second, then in orange is Ibiza Love against the running red. On the right in black is Tagline, between those in blue is Fairy Cross, Bet me in blue and maroon behind those. The white jacket, Mamselle Chanel against the running rail. Extreme right then is Dance in the Grass, a run down the centre from her. Lady Alara's the back marker, they still haven't got to Ipanema Princess though who is heading up down to the two foul on pole. She's got about two length lead here. Pure gold, fairy cross and dance in the grass are in pursuit. Tagline's dropped out to the back of the field. Bet me is behind this and now it is the market leaders. Fairy cross in the all blue, the blue and white dance in the grass who sweep through to the lead. They've shot three lengths clear from Bet me and Lady Alara. It's fairy cross, William Buick, the white cap dance in the grass, Sylvester de Souza. There's nothing between them with dance in the grass getting in front laid on to win. Fairy cross in second, third is very tight, the pink jacket of Lady Alara, the darker colours of Bet Me. Dance in the Grass remains unbeaten and she was really taking it sound down here on her debut and now she's won the Star Stakes listed for Charlie and Mark Johnson. That was really good. You must be delighted with every aspect of that, I'd have thought. Yeah, do, yeah I wasn't delighted during the race, um, but delighted that she could overcome uh, you know, a relatively slow start. They obviously went very, very fast um, and I was panicking a wee bit and, you know, as to what sort of position she would get round the bend and how wide she would have to travel. Um, luckily, Sylvester kept the head, got round the turn before he, he set off after them, um, and it's worked out well. He he said that he were here last time on on faster ground, and said that although it's hard to compare the two races, um, he felt that she, you know, we could see see that she'd be better on the faster ground. He felt that she would she picked up nicer on the on the better ground, and that today she was struggling to get her feet out of a little bit, but. So that all goes well for the future. That, that rain's had a lot more, the 3.5 mils of rain last night has had a lot more impact from what everybody's feedback than I was really expecting. Yes, you know, we're, we had one runner last night and, um, I th you know, I wasn't here, but I c could see that they were getting into it and then apparently there was quite a bit more rain after that. That's right. That's yeah. Right, yeah, the old story of rain on watered ground. Yeah. Yeah. And also raced on ground, I suppose. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. OK, well, I mean, the strong pace and her the stamina that's in her pedigree quite clearly helped her. Where do you see her campaign for the rest of the season? Yeah, well, she's obviously going to step up into to group races now. Um, you know, off the top of my head, you immediately think Philly's Mile is the long-term target, but uh, this is very much Charlie's department at home now that... Uh, he can juggle it all in his head and all the different horses and all the different races. And um, so I very much leave a, a lot of that to him. He earmarked this race for her straight after her, her debut. Um, and so he's got that much right. So I'll left, leave, <laughs> leave the next step to him as well. well but I'll be interested in what he thinks. Because obviously, the accent on stamina in that race, it turns out also at this track. At the moment, she's got entries in the debutante and the Moyglare over yeah. seven. And, yeah. and you wonder whether they, whether even now she might want to go a, up to a mile if she's going to go up in grade. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I'm, I've got no doubt whatsoever that she'd get the mile. But at the same time, you know, she's done it twice at seven. and. Um, you know, no reason. You know, t today was a breakneck speed pace, I think, and um, she, you know, she's managed to to stay in touch and to to get there okay. So. Yeah, I mean, she's a lovely looking horse. You're going to have great fun with her next year as well, aren't you? Yes, yeah, absolutely. She's quite backward. Um, you know, so um, it, I, I have to say, early on, we didn't think that she would be running at this level at this time of year, but. Um, uh, that, that, that seems to be. We've only got three cracks, man. But um, uh, the the other two are a bit similar. And um, Krakovia, that's run already and won already. And you know, if we looked at them both in the spring, we'd have said these are going to be slow maturing late two-year-olds and really not going to see the best of them till three. So um, everything's a bonus, I hope.
Well, that's great to hear. It's what you want to hear as well from a, a middle distance stallion wanting to establish himself. This is a really important Absol win for Cracksman, I think, today. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, we're not the stallion business or get any connection with the sire, but I'm sure they must be very, very pleased. And he was, he was very viable at the sales last year, his progeny. Um, won't be so easy for us, you know, he's a perfect kind of horse for, for us um, and I'm sure they won't be so easy to buy this time around. You were talking, you've, you've done an interview in the Thoroughbred Daily News about buying and how many yearlings you've bought and having to buy on spec and basically it's trusting you and your team's judgment, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so I don't, don't know to what extent we've sort of made that rod for our own back over the years, you know, it started off like that, I had no orders, I had to buy on spec, as we've got more and more owners and they've got used to that system they know they can sit back and see what I buy at the sales, but it does limit us a bit on the, the, the top end. You know, we've, we've got to, we can't you know, spend any more than we can risk our, ourselves. At the end of the day, I've got to pay for them if no owner wants them. So it keeps the average down. I think the average last year was around the 30,000 mark for 72 yearlings and all. Um, so that frustrates me at times, but it's done as well over the years. Well, I was going to say, would you really want it any other way? I mean, it's a proven system. It very much works for you. We know your phenomenal success over the years. Yeah, as I, as I always say, you know, we're delighted with this, the, the horses we got, but those 72 yearlings are not the 72 I wanted most. They're the 72 I could afford. I'd love to go there and be able to buy the ones I really want, not just the, the, the ones that fall in our price bracket. I'd, I'd love to know how they fare compared to the ones that got away that cost a hell of a lot more. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, I think that something I've been explaining to owners for years is that you pay a lot more to get a little more advantage. You know, so you're not going to see a dramatic difference, but it's still quite hard when you're, you're competing against stables that are full of, of six-figure yearlings. It's, it's, it's hard to compete against them. I reckon you're doing OK. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you, know, you always want better, better stock. Yes, and uh, and the impact of, of Shadwell on you and their their rationalisation. That's a, a significant impact. You know, we had 17 Shadwell horses last year and none now, um, and they're always been nice horses. You know, so it's it's not just a, a drop in numbers; it's a drop in quality as well. So this filly and your two-year-olds, where does she sort of sit amongst amongst your fillies at the moment? I know it's early days still. Um, yeah, it's early days, you know, and uh, you know, some, some bubbles get burst and others, you know, rise out the ashes. Um, Lakota Sue, obviously, that was third in the Chesham, you know, she's a very, very nice filly as well. Krakowia got beaten, we're disappointed by that, but she could bounce back from that. Um, so, you know, we've got, we've got nice colts and fillies. Well, that's good to hear. Many congratulations on this success and thanks for chatting to us. Thank you very much. Thank well you. Thank thanks. You. Thank you.